What's up guys? It's Dark Light Alex here, and today we are going to round up our Yu-Gi-Oh! Monsters Power Scaling series. This time there will be some crazy insane jumps in power, so get ready to be surprised at some conclusions I made. If this is the first video you guys are watching of my series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Power Scaling, I highly suggest checking out the other parts, as they all tie to this one and complement it. In the last part, I scaled the 2800 range upwards to be at the very least dwarf star level range based on number 9 Dyson Sphere, a monster that literally covers a star in its structure. The next power level range I found really interesting are the 2900 attack one. On one side, supporting my established scaling logic, we have Cosmo Queen stated to be queen of the galaxies and mistress of the stars. Now, she being a ruler of galaxies doesn't make her galaxy level, okay? But as a queen of the cosmos, it correlates with the having, uh, with her having cosmic level power, as this range is composed from dwarf star to star level. On the other side, there is Spiral Serpent and its lore upgraded Phantasm Spiral Dragon. On Spiral Serpent, it is stated that its hunger lays cities asunder, and this could be a negative point to my scaling logic, if you assume this makes the serpent only city level. However, the way it is stated just looks like it's a casual feat and does not contradict, contradict my already in place scaling. For 3000 attack monsters, I can then safely say they're in the star range of power, which makes the famous blue eyes white dragon and other cards like Ancient Gear Golem, Judgment Dragon, and both Envoys, Chaos Emperor Dragon and Black Luster Soldier, this much powerful. For an argument to back this up, I can bring Amaterasu, which in Japanese culture is the goddess of the sun, and wield its power. Uh, she also has 3000 attack and even 3000 defense. Still, talking about 3000 threshold, we can scale some cool high defense monsters like Labyrinth Wall and Millennium Shield, which can be said to have star level durability. In the same threshold, we can use again Blue Eyes White Dragon to power scale a stat we haven't talked about since the first part, speed. So, this particular feat happened in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime in episode 109, when Seto Kaiba was dueling against one of the big five. Leicester, and he ordered the Blue Eyes to destroy Leicester's satellite cannon, who was in space at around 2050 miles above sea level. This feat took 30 seconds to have, placing the Blue Eyes at around massively hypersonic speeds that can possibly be scaled to other monsters around the same stats. Getting above 2000 stats, the next big monster that supports the previous scaling I've done is Star Eater, with his 3200 attack points. As his name and card art shows, he's a dragon that feeds off stars and is comparable to them in size, which puts him at star level at least. From here on, feats are almost non-existent, so a lot of headcanon is needed, to be honest, but I'll try to be consistent and put monsters in levels I feel would make the most sense, ok guys? So, monsters from 3400 to 3800 like Sophia, Goddess of Rebirth, Tierra, Source of Destruction, Meteor Black Dragon and Gate Guardian would probably hit in the large star range. In the dual terminal universe, both Sophia and Tierra were able to maintain the cycle of life and death, destruction and creation, so this level can even be a low ball. Monsters with 4000 plus attack points might be at least large star level plus to solar system level. Cool examples will be the Egyptian gods, the wicked gods, the sacred beasts, Cyber and Dragon and Odin, Feather of the Aesir, who all have extreme amounts of power, and some, like the gods, are so powerful they were feared in ancient times and in the present. I'd say the gods are pretty much equal with each other with maybe the Egyptian and Wicked Gods being slightly stronger than the rest of the 4000 range monsters. I'm not gonna take into consideration the stats altering effects of these monsters, 
for simplification purposes, with just one monster being an exception later on. So, uh, be with me here, guys. I'll explain better in just a moment. Monsters ranging from 4100 to 4900 are probably very much above solar system level at this point. I'll argue a monster like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon with its 4500 attack are probably above even base level multi solar system level. Even though it might look absurd, but again, the nature of my scaling shows with some decent proof that attack and defense uh, are exponential increases in stats, not linear increases, not, not linear ones. So I'd say it's all decently accurate. Moving even further in stats, we have the 5000 attack plus behemoths, like Dragon Master Knight and Five Headed Dragon. And surprisingly, I do have a way to make sense of all the head cannon scaling you guys have endured. I know it's hard guys, but it's necessary. So, there is one particular monster called Super Dimensional Robot Galaxy Destroyer, which we could say by its name can destroy a galaxy, even though this is not mm, like 100% assurance, it's just fair to say that it at least backs up the scaling. I'll say these 5000 attack monsters are between multi-solar system plus to galaxy level as a low ball. And finally, the top 3 most, most powerful monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! At third place, it's Hermitile, the Chaos Phantom, the Sacred Beast's Fusion. It's the exception to the rule of no stats increase effects, as it's a different kind of effect. It has zero attack in your opponent's turn, but it has a whopping 10,000 attack points in your turn, making him the monster with the highest attack in the TCG. Fair to say he will be at least a galaxy buster. In second place, I have Exodia as an unsealed monster. This one was a little tricky to scale. His individual pieces are fairly weak, but he wins you the game if all the pieces are in the hand. The thing that made me reach to him being this high between all other monsters, and in the power range I'm gonna tell you guys, was his flavor text in his limbs. No, no, wait, wait. I know you guys are gonna play the No Limits Fallacy card, pun intended. <laughs> but hear me out first. The flavor text says the player will know infinite power if Exodia gets released. I interpreted this as infinite 3D power. With this, I mean he can destroy an infinite amount of matter and or space, which yes, means he can destroy a, a universe if he wants, but can't affect, affect the fourth dimension or anything about that, making him at full power a high universal threat. Some of you might already know the one monster I consider number one. It is, of course, Horakate, the creator god of light, being the apparent creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! multiverse, as this monster OCG card is the only card with the creator god type, besides having an instant win condition when summoned. It's very hard to say for certain in which level this would uh, make her, but I guess it's safe to assume she created at least one timeline, and probably all of them as the Yu-Gi-Oh! series was shown to be a multiverse since Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's era, making Horakti a low multiverse to multiverse level monster. And that's about it guys, hope you all enjoyed my power scaling of this series, which I did try to make as accurate and evidence reading as possible. But Keep in mind, it's all just my overall understanding of the series, it is in no way presented as absolute 100% facts. So please, be sure to like and subscribe if you all want more of this type of content. And see you guys later, bye!